Welcome back into the Illini Enquirer podcast. And this is one of my favorite guests to have, uh, brings so much insight and uh, is just well connected and appreciate his analysis as always. It's Joe Hendrickson, City Suburban Hoops Report. You can follow him on Twitter at Joe Hoops Report. And, and Joe, um, I know one of the guys just got to Chicago, but uh, I've talked to you for about a decade about Illinois recruiting Chicago and, and to get two in the, the same two week period. Pretty, pretty nice week for uh, Tim Anderson, the assistant coach uh, that's kind of led this, and uh, Brad Underwood, the Illinois coach. We count, we're counting the guy that's been here a month. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Ty, Ty Rogers, obviously, um, you know, moved from, you know, Michigan to, to Thornton and, and getting him and Merez here. I mean, this is, you know, a, a big, huge um, plus for the program because I, I wrote about a little while ago, you know, and no fault of I don't I don't blame Brad Underwood or the staff at all for not heavily bringing in Illinois prospects uh, over his short tenure so far because one they branched out on their own, uh, used their ties, and then two they there wasn't this depth of high major talent in Illinois uh, during his time there. So they did what they've had to do in, in terms of Iowa Sumu and Adam Miller, but then there's just so much familiarity over the past four decades of Illinois basketball with high school talent that it's really hard to imagine a really good Illinois program being at its highest level without Illinois talent. And it's just, it's unheard of. It's never happened before. So um, I I just think this is a, a big shot in the arm recruiting wise back in this state uh, you know, even though Ty Rogers has only been here, you know, a short time, he's still, you know, affiliated with Mean Streets. He's still connected to that program, an Illinois-based program. And um, and then Merez is, and in particular, Jeremy, these two guys, I think, before Brad Underwood even came to Illinois and what, we, and what we've seen while he's been here, I mean, I just think these two kids fit what he's all about to a T. And, and in terms of their intangibles, everything they bring to the table as far as a player, a kid, their toughness, uh, the competitiveness. Those two are, are, I mean, Merez could be number one in that class as a player, but more importantly, he might be definitely number one with, with those characteristics I just mentioned. And then Ty Rogers, I, I love that kid. And um, he's a kid I got really, I, I was really high on as an out of state kid that you just kind of watch because you're watching mean streets or even if you're just kind of watching the, not paying as much attention to him, evaluating wise. Um, but it, it's funny when you see a kid from out of state that you fall in love with, uh, you almost go overboard or I go overboard with those types of kids that I do even the in-state kids. And Ty Rogers was that kid in this class. I got to ask why, why did you fall? Why did you fall? Uh, well, a little bit. What, what I just talked about, uh, I think he's all about, all the right things and you know he played with big name guys like you know aj casey and, and jalen washington with those with that mean streets team and cam craft uh the kid originally from bubble grove heading to xavier and and he just kind of fit in with ever with whatever he needed to do whatever they needed wanted him to do he did it and that's guarding five men that's guarding point guards that's guarding on the wing uh that's that's making plays um, that don't show up in the box score. Uh, and then that competitive toughness that I've talked about before, he bring, he exudes it. And whether he's getting diving on the floor or, or tacking the offensive glass, uh, getting his hands on a ball, whatever it might be, he just played the right way and he played so hard. And it didn't matter who was watching. It didn't matter if college coaches were in the gym or not or, or just, you know, a regular old AAU game. He was getting after it, competing every single time he steps foot on that floor. And that's what I think Illinois High School basketball fans are going to see at Thornton this year. And then obviously what Illinois is going to get. You know, he, he's a little rough around the edges uh, in, in a certain area of his game. You know, his shot has got to get better. Um, his, his range in particular, his consistency with that shot. Uh, and the overall skill level. You know, he, he, he's pretty good inside that 15-foot range along the baseline, off the wing. And he attacks the basket. He's strong, college-ready body, higher-level athlete who can finish and, and make plays some – the ooh and ah plays that, that I think can kind of get a, get a team going, get a crowd going. Um, 
but he still does need to really kind of refine his his skill set. How, how rare is that, Joe, um, to, to bring it every night? I, I know Brad Underwood, obviously all coaches are looking for that, but, you know, when you're in high school playing all these games and AU games, like how rare is that? Like how, how often do you find that in kids? It's, it's becoming more and more rare. And, you know, I think the toughest well, – I'm, I'm said the word already, but, but the toughest thing to evaluate is toughness. Yeah. And I, it is – I mean, they can trick you. They can fool you. They can give you some rah-rah, whatever. I, I just think it's really – and I'm talking more about the mental stuff. You can see the stuff on the court, but uh, you, you just don't know how freshmen are going to react from the toughness factor, how tough to get through certain things when practices are a little bit more of a grind and tougher when um, you're not playing as much, when the minutes aren't there, uh, when your role is diminished and you're not quite sure of your role, how do you fight through that? So, and there's no way of telling what a freshman, how they're going to react. And, uh, but as far as on the court, uh, like you just said, like I just said, it's rare. It's hard to find guys that bring it every day. And I'm not sure what the reason is. It's just a too cool for school vibe that I, I see way too often now in comparison to 20 years ago. And I don't know if it's, I, I really don't have the answer, uh, but it's definitely glare is definitely a glaring uh, problem. I see it in, in AAU and high school basketball. Yeah. Social media could be part of that and uh, followers and all. Well, yeah. And, and playing so many games and they're, they're playing way more games now, particularly in AAU uh, than, than they ever have. And, and I get that to a degree, but um Ty Rogers brings it and he's got the, the mindset that, that he is going to bring that every game and and, in multiple ways, offensively, defensively, and uh, and show that on a consistent basis. Well, when Merez Johnson committed, I had to do a double take uh, Joe, because I remember when I started in this industry and you were already doing this, like Tracy Abrams committed as a sophomore, like, Ryan Boatwright committed as an eighth grader. Like it was a common place for really young teenagers to, to make these commitments. Right. This is, this is a rarity. Uh, and, and I know I want to get your thoughts on what he is as a player, but um, what was it? Like, why is this one unique where Illinois was able to, to close this one down or Merez just wanted to get this over with? Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, it, I think that's gone in cycles as far as, you know, the days of the Jeremy Richmond's and yeah. then Brandon Paul and DJ Richardson and, you know, those were all pretty early. And and then we really did go away from that in, in, in recruiting. And I think, and I think it's been pretty well documented and, and publicly so far when Merez news broke is he, his intent was to stay home. And we, we talked about, you know, being tough and competitive every single game. Well, the whole staying home thing is, you know, I, I know Illinois fans don't want to hear this. Uh, but I, I think it's gone out the window um, over the last decade or so. I mean, it, it, I'm, I mean, Merez proves it's still there, but I just, those days of where everybody in Illinois wanted to play at Illinois, that just, it's just not really there anymore. Um, I, I think that's a big part of that is social media, uh, cable television, every game's on TV. You can see teams across the country uh, on TV uh, almost any given night. So, it's not as if, you know, Illinois and DePaul and those schools are the only ones that you could see every night. So I think that played a big part. And, and that's not to take away anything away from, from kids that still want to play for their home state. And Merez, you know, he talked about, you know, like his dad, seeing him every game and, and making that easy, making that easy trip down uh, to Champaign. So I think that was, you know, the biggest factor in, in pulling the trigger early uh, that he found a, a place he found that was comfortable. And it's what I want, which is to stay home. And, I, you know, the, the question is, do you go, you rewind three years, four years ago, Illinois struggling? Do they get an early commitment from Merez? I, I don't know. I would guess no, because I think high profile guys are going to want to see that, the, you know, proof in the pudding and, um, you know, to, to commit that early. So, you know, I think their success these last couple of years is, is, is resonated with these young players. They see it live. They see it happening. They don't know 2005. Uh, they barely know a Darren Williams or a D Brown. So it, it, it is very big to have success. And I, you and I have talked about the, that very thing um, in radio shows and podcasts. 
Illinois had to win. They had to show. Uh, and you only have a certain amount. You only have a certain window to do that in. Yeah. You know, John Gross won right away, did not win after, and it went away quick. Uh, Brad Underwood a little bit different, struggled early on, and now they're winning. And, and you know, knock on wood, they stay healthy. They should win big again this year. Yeah, Joe, I want to ask you, too, like, obviously the winning, um, Brad said, hey, we're starting to be sexy uh, again. And, and you can certainly see that in this recruiting class, the, the previous couple ones. But, but getting Io um, and, and having him there in Chicago with the Bulls, like, is there an Io effect? Like, having someone that you can see that you saw succeed for three years here, get developed well, like, has that had an effect at all? I, I think it does. I also, man, such a huge part of recruiting. Uh, and I, I, I would be willing to bet it might be the number one thing is getting guys to the league and having representation in the NBA. I know, I know the common fan probably doesn't uh, really jive with, you know, jive with that, but it's just facts. I mean, it's just what kids talk about, you know, I, um, you know, my, my story, I just wrote on Ty Rogers the night. That's, that's, that's what he said. Uh, he believed that Illinois was the school that would best prepare him and get him ready for the, and specifically he said the NBA and, you know, whether Ty Rogers in the NBA, I don't know, you know, but um, the point is, you know, having a player, uh, you know, IO in the NBA, particularly playing locally. And then you add on the fact of IO who he is as a person, um, you know, he's well-connected, well-liked in the city. Uh, he's embraced by the public league. Uh, and I think that extends beyond the public league now because obviously he had started Illinois. So yeah, I, I, it's a no question um, that the success that Iowa has benefits Illinois. There, there's no doubt. And Illinois is is short on NBA talent. And the more you have, the, the you know, you look at Gonzaga now. I mean, now they, the last decade or so, have been churning out the NBA players. And now all of a sudden, now they are able to get the Suggses and the Holmgrens, guys they weren't really in on even before, even though they had all that success. So, yeah, I, kids see it they they, they want to be uh, in the best situation for them to prep them for the pros and joe marez johnson it's weird to get a scouting report on a sophomore who hasn't even really started his sophomore season yet but i mean obviously a lot of schools like what they've seen already with all the, the high major offers he has what does he bring to the court and, and how much more do you think he can grow before you know 2024 he's he's putting on an Illini uniform yeah, that, what you just said right there at the end is what I get excited about. I just think he has just so much upside left in him. I, I think a lot's untapped uh, in terms of his development as, you know, and I go to the skill level because a lot of the intangibles are already there, which sometimes you don't see in young players. That develops over time and maturity. And with Merez, I mean, I, I was just at in October at uh, the Pangos uh, All-Star Camp, and I remember – tweeting about it just saying it, it goes back to what I said about Ty didn't matter that there was no college coaches in there it didn't matter it was just ragtag basketball he was attacking he was getting on the glass he was running the floor he was encouraging um, even some teammates that he didn't even probably know that were on his team because they're just thrown together uh, so that part jumps out at you but then there's that you know he's got the athletic and the physical attributes that are high major he's six eight uh, might still be growing a little bit, could end up a six, nine versatile hybrid foreman that you can, you can, he'll probably down the road, not right now, but, uh, you could probably play him at the five, the four, some three, uh, in time as a skill level develops. So his versatility with those physical attributes and his, um, you know, his, again, I keep going with that toughness, that competitiveness that he brings, uh, all you package that all together. And that's why he's a high major as a freshman and obviously uh, Illinois be able to secure that early commitment, even though there was a bunch of, you know, big 10 high major offers for them, for him uh, early on in his high school career. Joe, obviously Illinois played pretty well the last couple of years. And as you said, uh, barring injury, they should have a pretty good year this year, despite the loss at Marquette, that was pretty ugly with their big man returning here. Um, but they're starting to stack classes, right? Like we're seeing, top five class after top five class in the big 10 here. Um, and, and this one with Jade Epps and sincere Harris and, and Ty Rogers, what do you make of what, what this class could potentially do for Illinois? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think Epps is a bucket getter. He's he, he's he's a kid that, um, you know, I, I don't know if he's – and I've seen not as much as him, of him as only kids, but I'm not sure he's as much of a pure – lead guard as you would envision but he he will go get you a bucket and uh so I, you know i i just think again you know a couple of you know four-star kids here and then you know ties of four star. so you're getting like you just said these these classes on top of each other that college coaches always talk about in particular you know you know you see these different recruiting classes and it's interesting to watch who's how many high school kids they're bringing in because of the whole transfer, because of the portal and, and immediate eligibility. Most schools don't want to lock themselves up with too many high school kids. Right. And, you know, I think Illinois is doing right now a nice balance uh, as well as like balancing out some of the classes. And, uh, and that's important too, to look at. So I, I just, a lot is to be determined this spring of, of are we going to, is it going to be just this mass exodus again? Uh, I suspect it will be. I think it's going to take two or three years for this to cycle through for kids and parents and their people to realize, oh, crap, I, I got nowhere to go. Um, so, and I, I think some saw that initially early on and had to play it out in the spring a little longer than even they anticipated. And I think it's going to take some time for people to realize that it's not going to be as easy as they think uh, finding the ne their next home. But yeah, th this class is important, obviously, because you want to keep that ball rolling while your name is hot. Uh, you, you know, I used John Gross as an example earlier, and I'll use Bruce Weber as as a prime example of it drying up quickly after that 2005 run when you did not capitalize, and that's that's why he, you know, he was out of there within I think three years, was it three years later, I think, but uh, four years. I. I, you, you've got to maximize. You just have to when, when you're hot. And, you know, I know it would have been a lot better if Illinois had got that Loyola win and, and advanced the, you know, Elite Eight or Final Four. There's just that much more buzz that goes with it, both locally and nationally. Uh, but right now, I mean, they're, they're on the right path to being a tournament team again. And because Illinois, they had some bad luck despite the success. The, the COVID year, not getting the tournament when they hadn't been in for, for a while that was a crusher uh you know getting upset by Loyola in, in a sweet 16 that, that that was crushing uh but you know there's it's not like it was a one and you know one and done and you know it's a major rebuild they're ready to roll again despite like you said man that Marquette game was awful I mean, <laughs> but uh you know I I think that's going to be just um uh, an anomaly uh, rather than the norm and I, I think they're poised to have a big year when they get Kofi back and and, and keep that positive mojo going I want to ask you, Joe, as somebody who's probably known him for a really long time, Tim Anderson is a pretty good month for him uh, on the recruiting job. Obviously very tied in with the Mean Streets program, which is pretty good right now. I mean, 2024 kids loaded with guys. Uh, 2023, we haven't mentioned all the Illinois guys who are now outside of the state, but Illinois is very much in the thick of it with Jeremy Fears and uh, Kyle and Boswell, all those guys. Um, but Tim Anderson, what do you think he's brought to Illinois? Well, I think he's brought what Illinois assistants have always brought. And, and whether you think this assistant did a good job or a bad job or, you know, you go back to Gross's staff with Paris Parham and what he tapped into, he tapped into his great relationship with Robert Smith and Simeon and got Kendrick Nunn and was his, their first recruit and then added, you know, you can say what you want, DJ Williams, um, you know, call him a bus, whatever you want. I, you know, but that's where they went, uh, Jalen Tate. So, I, you know, and then, um, you know, Chin uh, just went to his bread and butter, which was Mac Urban Fire and Morgan Park and was able to get Io and Adam Miller. And 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 now we see Tim Anderson, a shift here where, uh, you know, Mean Streets is is loaded. Uh, James Brown, the, the St. Rita teammate, who's, you know, the number one player, 6'9", six, 6'9". Closing on 610 plays with just left the fire to go to mean streets. Uh, so Merez plays with him, you know, full time. I don't know if that'll, that'll matter, but the point is um, there's a direct link, a direct, a direct connection uh, with that program. And, and Illinois has been able to utilize it. If, if they're not able to utilize it, you know, whether it be 
Tracy Webster or Paris Parham or, or Jaren's Howard or, or Chin or Tim Anderson, then they're, that, that's what they're here for. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why they're getting paid what they're getting paid. So uh, I, I think it's a big bonus and a big plus at this particular time uh, with mean streets. Yeah. Joe, before I let you go, um, is Brad right? Is, is Illinois sexy again? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I keep going back to, I mean, I, I hate to harp on the, the past and, and yeah, yeah, I that it. loss. It, it just <laughs> it, up, up here in the Chicago area, it, it was a killer. I mean, it just, particularly because it was Loyola and Porter Moser and it just, it, it just was such a thud to such this great, uh, you know, run one seat, all of that. And then just kind of poof gone. But yeah, I, I, you know, with the IO, the IO thing was, it was big for the state, the city uh, and the success they had with him as the catalyst. Uh, it, they just, you know, again, uh, I just believe, and I think you probably do too, that they're going to be just fine as long as they stay healthy. Uh, Big Ten's obviously tough, but it, I, you know, it'd be hard to imagine them not being in the NCAA tournament. So that's putting together three straight, you know, kind of headline grabbing seasons where you are in the forefront of, of college basketball and um, call it sexy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think. It's, I'll say it's more reputation than even sexy. They, they, they've in an identity. Uh, they've got that which they were floundering and not having for quite a few years prior, you know, and, and I just think that that substance of winning in Illinois basketball and, and knowing what you're going to get when they step on the floor and, and what you're going to get from season to season is probably more important than being sexy. That's important. That's, that's well put, Joe. Joe Hendrickson, City Suburban <laughs> Hoops Report. You can follow him on Twitter, at Joe Hoops Report. You can uh, read him in the Sun-Times. I do every morning. Get that paper in my driveway, Joe. Uh, it's, it's great stuff. Joe, thank you as always, man. Hey, thanks, Jeremy, for having me.